right, thank you very much. And hello again, radio friends. How in the world are you? You doing all right today? Well, I'm glad to be back with you and just to share with you from the Word of God. Somebody sent me uh, the classic uh, poem by Edgar Guest. You must have it in your own library. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one would walk with me than merely show the way. The eye's a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Some counseling is confusing, but examples always clear. And the best of all the preachers are the men who live their creeds. To see the good in action is what everybody needs. Well, thank you, Radio Friend, for sending along that classic verse by Edgar Guest. He would never be known as one of the uh, great poets, per se, but he wrote things that touch the heart and that are, in their homespun fashion, very practical. I guess that's what I want to be remembered for, that what I said could be used by people. I pray every day when I prepare to face these microphones that God may say through me, lovingly, surely, but effectively, things that you can use. Well, we're looking at Psalm 37, and we've come to verse 23, a verse that I have often used when I prayed, reminding God about it. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Ordered steps. What a blessed concept. The steps of a good man. Now, you have to, <clears throat> you have to realize that there's nobody good but God. Jesus said so. But you and I may take this promise and apply it if we are trusting the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is our righteousness. Any goodness there is in him, we take by faith. Christ is made unto us. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness. That's where goodness, the concept of goodness comes in. He's made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. The Lord Jesus Christ is all I need. I can take it by faith. And that includes then this concept, biblical concept of goodness. His goodness, his righteousness is mine by faith because he bought it for me at Calvary's cross with his precious blood. That's the background then of coming to a verse like Psalm thirty-seven, twenty-three, and claiming it for one's self. Are you indeed committed to Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior? Have you opened your life to him and is he now by his Holy Spirit dwelling within you. If that be true, then you can say, this verse is for me because Jesus is all the goodness I need. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What does it mean to order things? Number one, it means you have the right to say what's going to happen. Number two, it means that you can schedule what's going to happen. Number three, it means you can you can determine when it's going to happen. And number four, you can determine the results of what happens. All of this is true of our blessed Lord. The steps are ordered by the Lord. I wonder if you dare to, to believe that in terms of or everyday ordinary circumstances. I've often told the young people at the King's College during those years which I served as, as president, pray your way through the day. Pray about little things. Pray as you go in between classes, something other than, Lord, don't let him call on me today. Pray before you start a casual conversation in the hallway. Pray before you go on a date. Pray before you make a decision. Pray before you start your homework. God will sharpen your wits and oil up the wheels of your mind. Pray before you answer the phone. You don't know who's on the other end of the wire. Pray before you open a letter. You don't know whether it's a check or a bill. There's a difference, as you know. Pray before you decide on a job, on a career, on a curriculum, on a major in college, on a life companion. Pray before you make the big and little decisions of life. The steps are ordered by the Lord. Tell me something. Would you be willing 
to take a whole day and, and actively trust God. I don't mean passively and say, well, it'll, it'll turn out all right. That's fatalism. I mean actively trust God, moment by moment, praying your way through the day, just committing yourself to him step by blessed step. Oh, the day will be a miracle instead of a mess. You try it. The Bible has a few things to say about the steps that God is involved in. Job said, he's numbered all my steps, and certainly then he knows about my sins. He's, he knows, he's numbered all my steps. Job 14, verse 16, let me find it. Now thou numberest my steps, dost thou not watch over my sin? Number. Now, each step then has an individual number. Can you, can, you, can you conceive of that? Well, Jesus said the hairs of your head are all numbered. That's even more. Of course, in the case of some of us, it would be a very simple matter. Not much left. But he, he said, Jesus said the hairs of your head are all numbered. Job remarks that God has numbered his steps. Step number one, step number 3,465, whatever it is, God knows which step is next. Now, why I'm bringing this up is that it becomes a, a source of great uh, comfort and confidence when you commit every step to the Lord. Every decision, every turning of life's roadway, you just turn it over to him. Why? Because the steps are numbered. He's got them, he's got them planned out. Business has learned, they, they call this the, the, the uh, system of, of planning. What's, what's the acronym for it? PERT, isn't it? Where you plan ahead by numbered steps. You start at the idea of what it is you wish to achieve, by when, and then you work backwards in the steps that must be taken in order to get there. And you put a time frame on each of those procedural steps. And they're all numbered. Business has learned how to do that. Well, God was doing it long ago. And so you and I need to have reference to God's goals for us. When you read the Bible, read in terms of what is God telling me he wants to do. You see, if you'll get in tune with what God is thinking about, remember the prophet said, can two walk together except they be agreed. If you'll get in tune with what God is thinking about and the goals he has for you, then you'll find that life makes sense and that the steps you take are indeed part of his blessed numerical order. Steps are numbered. It's quite a concept, isn't it? Pay attention to God's goals and then take the steps toward those goals by faith and let him number them. Then, of course, he goes a step farther in Job. Job 31, verse 4. Doth he not see my ways and count? All my steps. It's one thing to number them, it's another thing to count them. God does reckon the quantities of life. Over in the Old Testament, you find phrases like, their cup of iniquity is full. Uh, God waited hundreds of years before judging certain nations. The uh, command that God gave to King Saul to uh, attack the uh, Amalekites was not a whimsical, divine, vindictive command, but was the final step of a patient God who had waited for hundreds of years and uh, against whom these people had consistently rebelled with their idolatry and their cruelty. He's counted all my steps which tells me that God is actively involved in my day-to-day -day schedule. Now, it's one thing to assign a number to something. It's an, an, another thing to follow it up 
early on in learning a little bit about management, I learned that you don't delegate and forget. You delegate and then follow up. You set with your co-worker a time by which you are going to look at the work to see how it's going on. This matter of counting your steps tells me that God hasn't gone away and forgotten about me. He's on the job. And controlling what's happening. Well, then I'm turning. Isn't this good? (laughs) Then I'm turning over to uh, Psalm uh, 18. Psalm 18, where you have a little different concept. And it's so interesting to me. Psalm 18, verse 36 He said, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. Do any of you men understand about radial tires? Ladies, I presume many of you do as well. I don't mean to to downplay your intelligence, bless your heart. (laughs) But uh, radial tires are supposed to have a larger footprint on the road because of the way the tire is built. And thus it becomes... uh, less likely to skid, either in rainy or snowy or icy conditions. An enlarged footprint of the radial tires on your car is something that the tire manufacturers uh, advertise. You You can recall seeing ads that talk about that. Now here's the psalmist. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. It's the difference between walking in ordinary shoes in two feet of snow, or walking on top of the snow with snowshoes, or gliding along with skis. A larger imprint upon the place where you're stepping. Thou hast enlarged my step. Non-slip. You're not going to skid. None of his steps shall slide, it says in the Bible. Non-skid walking with God. Oh, listen, that's a, that's a great privilege, isn't it? When you walk with your Lord, he's going to see to it that you don't slip on the icy pavements of life. Now we go on with this the next time we get together. Father God, today, oh, keep us walking with thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Till I meet you once again by way of radio, walk with the King today and be a blessing. You've just heard Walk with the King, the ministry of Dr. Robert A. Cook. This program is listener-supported. For more information or how to find out how you can help continue this ministry, write to us at Walk with the King, P.O. Box 43, Trumbull, Connecticut, 06611. Or visit us on the web at walkwiththeking.org. Thank you for your support of this ministry. This has been program number 7011. Thank you for listening to Walk with the King. (music) 